And just to real quick introduce myself, I'm Mike Espinos. I'm an educator, uh, IT administrator, uh, general nerd. I've been playing since second edition. So, I mean, go team. <laughs> it's a uh, variety of systems and, and, and different, uh, different things like that. So one of the things that I believe in when it comes to online tabletop gaming is simplicity for users. In fact, um, as, as you were just saying, um, there's a, there's a, there's a technology divide where people don't really get what, like they haven't made the jump. They haven't, they don't have the resources. They don't have the tools. So, I mean, for some people, even account creation is a difficulty. I was sitting in the discord, um, earlier today and we were helping people create characters in roll 20 because they've never played before. So they, I mean, things like that, it's, it's very, we're very much going back to basics as we go forward. Uh, the tools that I want to bring out are things that I've over the years, I've cobbled together and ideas that I have, but also just give a general overview of online tabletop gaming as it stands. Um, first thing I want to do big disclaimer. Do not engage in digital piracy or theft of copyrighted works. Please don't steal stuff. The internet is full of things to steal. Please don't do it. So as we all know already, there's a handful of different gaming styles when we're talking about online gaming. Uh, for example, we have the classic maps and minis. Well, that can exist in a, vir a virtual space. Obviously, theater of the mind we've seen before, um, that kind of storytelling environment can easily convert to an online space. One of the classics that's been updated is play by post, which play by post is started, God, in the very beginning. It was the it was it's no different than you know playing chess by mail or any of those things. Games would be conducted via letters and long distance, and it's it's fun. And then the the most common gaming style is ghosting which is where you say you're going to be there for a game, but don't actually show up. Um, that's a very common one that I see quite a bit. So all of these things can be done online, which by the way, if anyone's in uh, the Twitch chat and you want to jump in with a question, I am paying attention to it over on the, over on the side. So if you see me looking all over, I have three monitors and it's, I feel like I'm in a command center. Uh, Maps and minis is probably the easiest one. There's a lot of tools out there right now that are great for helping you with maps and minis. Um, I'm gonna get to some of them as we go, but the easiest one, the one that's free and the one that's most widely available that people don't think about is Google Slides. And I'll get into an example of that later, but you can you can cut and paste the, um, you can cut and paste the little character images in there. You can upload any digital map you have. And then as long as you give editing permission to your players, they can move their pieces around on the slideshow. And that pretty much does what you need to do for that. Um, let's see. The next big thing is talking about communication. Um, one second here. I have realized I have made a mistake. So I am going to correct my mistake. There we go. That should be a little bit better. Now I'm not blocking my own... Uh, I'm not blocking my own text anymore. Um, communication is very simple. Discord is a very common way of creating things. Uh, you can create a server there for your game, or you can play on a bunch of existing uh, servers. For example, the GaryCon Discord server right now is very poppin'. There is a um, there's a healthy set of tables being played, and there's 300 people on the server. So if you need a player, there's somebody there for you. I also create my own. Um, I also create my own servers as well, and I will give you examples of that in a little bit. The other common thing is uh, Google Hangouts. It's a free tool. It's very simple. It's just a. It's just a chat program. You can get it through any Google account. Um, similar to Discord, you have Slack, which works similar. Skype. It's everybody's go-to. It's kind of like. Um, when everyone thinks of video chat, they think of Skype. It was the uh, first on the thing. Forums. Don't be afraid to have play by post in forums. I've seen it and I've seen it work very well and I like it. I um, unfortunately just don't have the time in my life to consistently dedicate to playing it. I'm sorry, I don't have ham radio on the list, 
Um, I have a CB radio around here somewhere I'd hold up too. We could do it by that as well. I mean, I do have carrier pigeon and tin cannon string on there. So I did try to try to provide a wide range of them. But communication is actually the most important key. One of the things I like about having a Discord server specifically for the campaign that I'm playing is that I can create private channels between me and each player. So they can do any side work or messages they want to send, or I could give them helpful notes as we go. It's, it's a big part of everyone who's DM'd knows that a big part of being successful is being organized. I mean, I may only have a note, and let me see. I, I don't think the camera's actually going to be able to pick it up, but my notes for my current campaign involve, oh, yeah, yeah, it's a green piece of paper, so it disappears. Um, my notes for my current campaign involve a dwarf in drag named Madam Damage. That's I may not have a lot of great notes, uh, but I do have organization when it comes to getting people to where they need to be. And a great thing about organization is you can use a lot of the tools that are available. Uh, there's bots that allow you to roll if you're using Roll20 or if you're using something like that. Uh, Roll20 is an environment that's called uh, like a virtual tabletop. Um, and I'll get to those on the next slide. But before we do those, um, there's a couple of tools you can use to organize your players and your, and your materials ahead of time. Some of them are free. Some of them are, are paid. Some of them are hybrid where you can get some of it free, some of it paid. A great one I've seen, and I will put a link to the to the presentation. Um, I should have put a link to the presentation there earlier. Actually, let me grab the, I'll grab a link to the presentation in just a second. Um, is one is OneNote, and I put a link within the presentation to a great tutorial by uh, Digital. I think it's Digital DM, who has a really awesome. Um, he has a really awesome like how to on using OneNote. And I very much wish I had the time to to create like the, the materials he has. He almost creates his own like digital tabbed books, and it's really awesome. It's it's just amazing. But unfortunately, I don't have that kind of time. So I personally I use uh, D and D Beyond. And here's a secret that apparently people didn't know about is when D and D Beyond does their uh, developers. Sorry, I, I don't have all of them. You're right, um, Alex Sandre. Alexandre. I don't have all of them on there. There's a lot of different tools out there. World Anvil is a good one. Um, I mean, honestly, if you're crazy, you could also use uh, OneDrive from Microsoft. Uh, you can use Dropbox. You can use all sorts of other things for sharing. I was just putting a handful of common ones out there. Um, but you can do OneNote. D&D Beyond is great. D&D Beyond, when they did their developers update last year at GaryCon, gave all the attendees a legendary bundle, which was like $600 worth of materials. And that was really amazing. Uh, unfortunately, they weren't there this year because none of us are there this year. Uh, Google Drive is nice because it's searchable. It's something you can share. Uh, for example, the Google Doc I just put in there is the doc for the slideshow. And I just shared it. And we'll actually get to that. Ooh, I got a, a warning that I'm dropping frames. So that's no fun. All right, cool. Um, I'll try not to move as much. And then there's the traditional pen, paper, books. I've I've run online games with a book, and it's messy, but if you're used to it, it's something you can get away with. By the way, if you're in chat and there's another service that I didn't mention that you think is amazing, go ahead, throw it in there, because other people need to see these things. We only learn about this stuff when we share things. I know that when it comes to like map making, I, somebody just showed me, I think it's called Fog of War. It was pretty awesome. So there's a lot of neat tools out there. For virtual tabletop, that's when we're talking about an entire tabletop environment. With, uh, with virtual tabletop, D&D Beyond is in the process of developing. Theirs is still in the, I would say, pre-alpha stage. Um, Roll20 has a really well-developed virtual tabletop space. There's also, I think, there's a program called Virtual Tabletop itself, and that one is really wonky to get going. Um, Fantasy Grounds, right now, because everybody be on quarantine, Fantasy Grounds is on sale, I think, for $10 for the basic license and like $75 for the ultimate. I'm sorry, I have allergies right now. I'm trying not to sneeze on camera. Uh, <laughs> uh, Fantasy Grounds is an install program, though. And that's, that's kind of where I draw the line with my players because, like I said, I want something that people can pick up a phone and use where they don't necessarily have to have a computer. 
I just need them to have an internet connection and show up on time. And for me, that's, that's good enough. Uh, Google Slides doesn't seem like a virtual tabletop, but let me see if I can get this. Uh, let me see if I can get it up there and show you, um, show you what I'm looking at. All right, so back. All right, so Google Slides, hold on, main screen share. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Um, and then add camera. All right, so sorry, I am not a Twitch person regularly. I like it. I've used it. I am not very good with it. Um, so you just, you kind of get what you get with me. All right, Roundy. There we go. All right, save. All right, so I'm going to switch to this layout and then I'm going to drag, sorry, for those of you who are on screen right now, um, I am going to drag my example over here. So with my example, you can see that I have um, Google Slideshow. I can drop in new slides as necessary. Oh, let's, let's be cool and make this nice and big. So the players, when I share this, um, if you're not sure what's happening in this, I was running the, I was running a one shot from, um, where the, the players encounter a zealot in a bar and you might be shocked. Oh, I did not update to see updated, not updated to see Google slides. I'm not sure what that question means. IWS 96 or LWS. So, oh, still seeing the bullet list. Oh, sorry. Did I? Hold on, let me try that again. Bullet list, and how's that now? Again, I am not awesome with technology. Okay. Yeah, you may need to... Okay, there we go. So with the Google Slides, a uh, very amazing thing happened. Um, the players managed to burn down the tavern. I don't know if you've ever seen that happen before, but players love burning down a good tavern every once in a while. So I was able to use the objects here to create a lot of the shapes that are necessary. Um, for example, whenever somebody drops, uh, summons a demon, I like to throw down a smiley face, things like that. The players themselves, uh, they all have, I made this item shareable. And so you'll see the share options show that anyone with a link can edit it. So once they got on there, they could play. And um, so they could grab their character. So my guy Moog, our Tortle cleric, say he wants to move uh, 15 feet. By the way, none of you yell at me for how I do my DMing. 15 feet diagonal is two squares. He can do that. Um, our player at the bar decided, you know, he wants to move here. He wants to, if he wants to jump up on the bar, he can do that. All the characters have the ability to move it, which is fine in itself as a, just a basic map feature. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of the smoke of them setting the bar on fire. But say for example, Moog casts a cast a blessing on our tiefling. It's not a free map maker. I had to. I used the map. Honestly, I just Googled tavern map and picked one that worked best. But it's a lot less programming necessary. Like virtual or uh, roll twenty is a great program if you're good at using it. I am not good at using it, and many of my players were having problems using it. So I needed to come up with something on the fly. And being a teacher, I'm used to collaborating with students. So uh, they love to collaborate using the Google stuff. And I'm like, well, why not that? Because I was literally projecting, I, I was playing with my students and I was projecting the map up onto the screen. And then they were using, um, they were using post-it notes to do their characters. And we were just moving the post-it notes around and it was super cool. But I'm like, why am I putting a slideshow on the screen when we can all edit the same slideshow? Um, and I'll say, say the cleric blesses our, our tiefling rogue over here. So I've already got oh, I've already got borders turned on, but one of the things you can do when you first set it up is you hit Control A, so it selects everything, and then you turn four point border on, and then you just turn the borders transparent. So cleric blesses the oh, oh hold on cleric blesses the tiefling, and I turn the border white. So now she knows she has a blessing. Let's say the knight hurts the cleric and he's poisoned. Oh no, I give him green because green is a good poison color. And I can easy uh, I can easily mark characters with what they have. Uh, one of the things I like to do is 
when the players first see the map, I'll have it laid out the way it is, and I'll be talking about characters. I may have other things in here, and I'll take the enemy, and I will move him um, order. I'll put him all the way in the back, and then what I have to, and then what I'll just do is when it's time for the enemy to appear, I can either hit control, and I'll click on the map, and I'll hit control down, which moves it down in the order, or I can just hit if I want to move, make all the enemies appear at once. I can just click on the map itself, hit order. And send it back and boom he appears it's kind of a fog of war it's janky it works um but yeah and then say our our cobalt here our sorcerer decides that he wants to uh use his breath weapon i just go to shapes i draw a triangle i start at the top i count my squares down i go okay he's got a breath weapon so i'm just going to like that oh oh no he got the guy but he also hit our turtle so that's kind of how I use Google Slides. It's free. It's easy. Everybody has access to it. It's silly. It's colorful. Um, in my own gaming, hold on. In my own gaming, if I go here, yeah, it works. That's exactly it. It works. Um, I'll give you a quick look behind the screens. Um, so in my own personal game that I'm playing with my players, I have an active map which I keep updated with everything they've seen. And that allows me to have a, um, they can actually go back on things that are important and then I can keep it there. So they're flying around on their airship while well, their airship is always there and it allows me to keep their tokens in place. And when they meet with the council of elders they're meeting with, they're all there. But I also have a pending map and the pending map is where I put everything uh, I keep all the old stuff, but I also put everything that we're going to run into. So on the next campaign, or on the next arc of the campaign, uh, they're going to go, and they have a choice of either going overland or underground to try and rescue the slaves from the slave camp. So when they make a decision, I can just um, I can just grab the map here. I copy the slide here. So I, if you see on the left, I've, I've highlighted the slide. I copy it. And then I throw it into their map and I'll paste it. And then I'll say, okay, guys, go to slide five. And they go there and then we have stuff happen. Um, say they choose to go underground. Well, you can see here, I've got the player view of the map and then I populated it with uh, notes to myself and uh, the, the various things that they're gonna run into. So they're gonna run into a Zorn if they go down here. They're going to run into the prisoners and the guards if they go here. If they try to loot this cave, they're going to have to fight a news. Um, can you prevent the players from moving the layers bottom to top? No. No, you really can't because they have edit powers. But as a DM, I mean, I just slap their hand. You know, rocks fall. Oh, no, you take six damage. Um, suddenly the world shakes because you moved the map and now, now you've taken damage. It's a way of discouraging it. The other thing is you can take a, um, the reason I have the two maps is so I'll drop, I'll copy and paste this for the players. And then I'll just go over here when they encounter the Zorn, I'll copy the Zorn and then I'll go to the active. I'll go back to the active map and say I'm on the active map. I just hit paste. The Zorn appears in the same place. Um, the problem is if you put something in the master slide, Malcor 77 says put it in the master slide. If you put it in the master slide, it's on every slide. Um, I try to avoid that. So, but yeah, so the copy and paste. And the other thing is you can put it, and I hit it down here. Oop, I did, didn't I? I put notes to myself for the different places. Okay, so the door to the storage room is a simple lock on a DC 12 to pick, 15 to kick. Um, things like that. I can put notes to myself that don't appear in the, in, the, in the edition that I copy for the players. I just say the entrance of the cave looks like it has a gap in some giant teeth. Um, secret for my campaign, the island that the slave camp is on is a dead Tarrasque that the people are mining parts out of because they think it's valuable. So, yeah, I'm a weirdo. Um, but yeah, so that's how I use Google Maps. And it's a really neat, that's a really neat way of going about it, or Google Slideshow to do maps. It's cheap, it's easy. I made all of these maps using a, a program called um, uh, Dungeon, Dungeon Draft. I just got it recently. It was very cool. And I was playing with it, so I wanted to make some maps. 
obviously on oh where i got three screens and i can't find my mouse on this one i just jankily put together two maps because it worked um on this one i had to zoom so one of the things i found is that like adjusting the size of the character icons so say i needed to, i needed to make all the characters bigger if i hold control and i click on them i can click on just the characters and then if i oop, hold on undo and then so if i hold shift while i'm stretching them it stretches it like consistently it's no matter what i do it's going to be the same so that's a neat way of making things bigger um so yeah, you can see, and you can do different things. Like I've thrown in clues here. I'm um, like, all right, so you find a, a pirate map with this circle on it. So um, there are a lot of things if you do Google, like uh, image search for D&D maps. Pinterest is an absolute like gold mine of maps from people. I'm not, sh obviously don't, don't pirate stuff. But on the other hand, there's a lot of stuff that's out there. So like, don't actively pirate stuff. It's hard to not pirate something because if I put one of my maps up and say I put it on a website and then I put it up on another website, the first website that I posted it to could actually claim copyright to it because it was posted to their website, even though I didn't give them the copyright to it because they think that anything that I post there is theirs. So it's very weird. Internet is a weird place. Um, so yeah, going back to this, Fantasy Grounds is cool. Like these things, if you have players that regularly play and there's a tool that's better for you, obviously use that. But also, I mean, use what's good for players. Uh, is there a quick look guide to how to best use Google Slides and Maps in Twitch or samples of existing uh, game to help them learn? I, ha I made a video actually. Um, it's in the Discord if you have that. Uh, if not, I can I can put a link to it. In fact, in my slideshow, here, I'll show you a secret. In my slideshow, I'm using the presenter view. I have all my notes and links to other things. Like, for example, D&D Beyond, is, they give away free materials to schools. I can throw a link to my video on YouTube on how to use Google Slides, um, if that'll help. I'm always happy to do stuff like that. Yeah, no, Google Slides is so simple. And if you combine it with Discord or even like, I mean, I'm using um, I'm using GoToMeeting, but you can use Google Meet or any of the other free like broadcasting software to just talk to your friends. If you trust the people who are playing, obviously somebody rolls a 20 every time it's critical. It's a little sketchy, but yeah. Um, I, I came up with this because Roll20 frustrated me. I'm a good programming person and Roll20 was just a pain in the neck. It's great. A lot of people love it, but it's just not for me. Um, so yeah, beyond that, resources, searching. Um, like I said, a lot of people don't realize searching is a lot easier than it sounds. So, um, actually let me switch back to my slide too. Google searching is something that, that people aren't, um, aren't keen on. So if I just do a standard search, D and D maps say, okay, tavern. Okay. That's cool. It's going to come up with a lot of taverns. If I do an image search, um, some of them are going to be low resolution. Some of them are not. But watch what happens when I change it to Google uh, and I do, I add site colon Pinterest.com. Nothing. I got nothing. I, oh, I Pinterest. I didn't put an E in Pinterest. Helps if you know how to spell. All right. So now I get a whole different set of maps available because now I'm not just getting the, the every Google map ever. I'm getting things that people have been proud of and posted to Pinterest. So it gives me a total, diff uh, totally different setup of what I'm getting. And like I said, Pinterest is, a, is, is an absolute gold mine for maps. People love putting stuff up there. Um, all right, so going back, by the way, I used to use OBS. That's what I'm used to using for broadcasting. I have to say the Twitch studio is pretty awesome. <laughs> if you set it up, it's pretty good. Uh, side, sidekick for rolling on Discord is good. Um, I use Avre because I've um, I've totally drank the Kool Aid on D and D Beyond, and Avre integrates. Um, so, for example, uh, actually, let me sh I'll show you my my Discord. Let's show you what I was talking about. Um, hold on, Alt Tabs. Do, 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 do. All right, um, I'm gonna go to my current game. 
none of my players will be mad at me. Okay, so for my current game, oh, well, this isn't helpful, but um, sorry, I got to switch screens. Here we go. So for my current game, this is what we've got going on. I have an in-game channel, an out-of-game channel, world lore, which I've locked to only me being allowed to post. So it's where I post various parts of our game um, as information. I have a humor channel because we all need it. And um, I have my own, oh, sorry. I have my own DM channel for when I need to roll something on the side without people seeing it. But each one of the players has their own um, their own way to communicate with me. Like, so this one was having computer issues and she contacted me. Another one is like, hey, I want to, this guy's like, hey, I've got an idea about how I want to, you know, roll with my character. So nobody else sees it. And Avre is in there to help. And I even have the two voice channels set up. And it allows us to play our game in a controlled environment. Uh, and the nice thing about Avre is since it since it uh, integrates into um, D&D Beyond, yeah, yeah, if you're doing D and if you're doing Roll Twenty, Beyond Twenty is a great extension. Um, no, actually, so the love the five E features for uh, Malcor seventy seven do not go to waste. So, say for example, I need to roll a D twenty. If I just simply type, um, oh, by the way, I switched the commands so that they would be similar to Roll Twenties because a lot of my players use it. Uh, so say I, I want to type, I want to roll. I do either R or I can type out roll. 1, D, 20. Well, okay, when I do that, I get a 9 back. Um, say I want to make character stats. I do forward slash R, uh, 4, D, 6. I can do that. And then I can just drop the lowest. So actually, that's that's decent stats on that one. Um but you can do a lot of things. And the nice thing is, if you are a 5e person, um, you can do, for example, check perception. And, oh, well, that's not bad. I got a 20. So it does an actual perception check. Or I want to do attack. So attack. And it'll be like, uh, hey, dummy, you didn't type anything. Here's what you can type instead. So I want to attack with my mace. I want to attack with my dagger. I can do those kind of things. Um, and that's just Avery, and that's Avery with Discord. Um, it's kind of nice. There's once you get Discord going, it's, Discord's great for organization. Adding in bots and things is great, but not necessarily like the only way to run the game. Um, the other thing is when it comes to searching tokens. Oh, I should go back. Sorry. Um, so searching. So this time I was looking for tavern. Uh, instead, I want to look for tokens. Well, one of the great things about tokens is that um, D and D. I don't know uh, cleric. Since we were jo we were laughing at clerics, token. So uh, link for Discord bots. Um, if you go actually to Discord, you can find. They have a pretty good list of Discord bots, and also you can uh, you can also um, just reach out in the GaryCon Discord or on Facebook or something, and people will throw opinions at you like no other. So if you look at the first thing that came up when I did a, a search for a cleric token, it's got this checkery background. That's really fun to use because it means that if I uh, copy the image and I throw it into my map. Um, he doesn't have a square around him. He's just like, he actually looks nice and pretty. But you'll notice that ooh, not every token, ooh, I just broke that. <laughs> not every token has that. So like this one always has the background like this. So what you can do is if you go to tools, you can go to type. Uh, or you can, uh, sorry, not tools. If you go up here in the search, you do file type. and then uh, colon PNG. That's gonna give you a lot a lot higher likelihood of getting um, tokens with no background. So you see that more of them are gonna have the no background option. And that's a great way of um, finding files that don't have them. Because what it does, what I told it to do is I told it to pick only PNG files. 
and PNGs are the ones that are, have blanks and vectors are, but don't use those. <laughs> um, and that'll give you, a, it helps you cut down on what you're looking for. Um, what else did I have? Hold on. Blah. Where did my, sorry, I have that present, day present, uh, and I got to go back here, screen three. Uh, streaming. I'm using, um, if you're going to stream, Twitch Studio Beta is pretty good. It's pretty simple to use. I'm using it right now. Uh, I set it up in 20 minutes before we started. Um, OBS is a really great, um, OBS is a really great streaming tool that's free, but it's also going to require you to get a padded desk because it involves a lot of banging your head on the desk. But it works when it works. Uh, OBS is called is short for Open Broadcast Software, and it's a really nice uh, streaming thing. If you're going to record, there's a ton of good screen recording apps out there. In fact, if you're running a Windows computer and you hold the Window key and hit G, it'll bring up screen recording for you. If you just want to record that kind of stuff, scheduling. Honestly, the best thing you can do for yourself in scheduling is create a Google Calendar uh, with events for your for your players. Share the events, make them, make the, if you can, if you're lucky enough, make them recurring so that the players remember they're there and they see it. Uh, if you can't make them recurring, um, you can always just create uh, events one at a time and invite your players. Scheduling is the hardest part. It is, there's a, there's a joke I've seen on the internet of two adults holding up their phones and the schedules don't match and they just hug each other because they'll never see each other again. I mean, right now in, in the COVID-19 time, everybody's got free time, it feels like. But in regular times, as an adult, finding the time when five people can get together to play a game is brutal. So um, what else did I have? Oh, demo time. Yeah, so all the things I just demoed um, are supposed to be on the next slide. Uh, where are we at? Did I run over on my time? I don't want to keep anybody longer than I have to. Okay. So uh, with that being said, I want to open the floor up to you guys for any questions you have. And I'm going to bring my, bring my talking people up. If anybody wants to talk, by the way, um, let me post my thing in there. Here we go. If anybody wants to talk, you can brave uh, trying to log in to go to meeting with me. And you can, you can talk in there. Or if you want to ask me questions in the Twitch chat, I'm more than happy to. Um, if not, I can just come up with random things to show off that are really fun. So, by the way, if anyone's curious about what I'm using, because right now the room behind me looks like it's really awesome. Uh, there's a app called Chroma Cam, all one word, that you can get. It's, the free version will put a watermark and it won't let you do custom backgrounds. But um, I paid for it because I don't need my students seeing what's behind me. Um I'm currently in a very messy bedroom with a, my kids have made a tent behind me. So that's where my home office is. Nobody needed to see that. So let's see, I got, oh, I got two questions over here. Um, somebody said, this is a cool map maker. It's called Deep Night N-I-G-H, so deep, spelled normally, N, uh, night, N-I-G-H-T, uh, dot net tools, RPG map. So I will copy and paste that into the. Um, I will copy and paste that into the Twitch chat as well, if anyone wants to check that out. I don't know what that one is, um, but I'm always happy when people put tools out for other people to check out. I think community is the best way to spread the cool things we do. Uh, would it be possible to get copies of the slides? Uh, yeah, um, sure. I I will put them in the Twitch chat. I, I put them in there earlier, but it depends on. When, when you got here, um, the cool thing is that the slides also have all of my, all of my notes to myself in there, um, and some of them have links as well. So I'm happy to, happy to help out. I am a big fan of sharing uh, materials and tools that we can. Um, I'm trying to think. Hey, Mike. Yes. Question. So, like, for us, trying to do it fairly simple with, uh, just like a webcam. And like, say the DM wants to be seen, but also wants to do a webcam of showing the 
showing the, the game board or whatever. So can you use your camera on the laptop to basically create you as a DM and then also like have another instance running to do the board as well so that, so that everybody can see the board at the same time? Um, yes, you can do that with OBS. I don't know if you can do it with, um, with Twitch studio beta. I've, I've realized that when you define a tool to be one thing, it's one thing. So I thought I was setting it up to have one scene where I was recording my second screen, one scene where it was recording my third screen. And it turns out that when I changed it to just record this screen, to just record this screen, it only recorded the one and it's, but with OBS, yes, you can. So, um, I don't have a laptop camera, but I can show you, let me see. I'll fire up OBS. Um, one sec. So, all right, give it a second. OBS is probably going to be, it's going to squawk at me because I'm using the camera somewhere else. But, um, I've done that before where I have a, a camera that's hanging over and looking at my dice tray as a DM. I know I'm not a fan of my players being able to see my dice. So, okay. So here we go. This is OBS. Um, so I'm going to create a new scene. Uh, scene two. Yeah. All right. So when I go to create this, I'm going to add the sources. Oh, hold on. This is very difficult to see the way I have it. There we go. Oh, and I need to move this. Sorry. There we go. That's better. Save. Okay. So if I'm creating the sources here, um, I create with OBS, I can do video device capture. And so I can capture the existing video device, which I have facing me, which is going to come up as borked because it's being used by the Twitch. And for some reason, you can't use one device to send, uh, I don't know. I'm not, I'm a computer person, but I'm not that much of an engineer. Uh, the other thing is then I can add a second video capture device here. And then I just set it up as device two. And then I can go and as, and I can choose, is it going to be life cam or is it going to be chroma cam? Well, it's also not going to give me life cam right now because that's actually what I'm using for this. I don't have... A, I don't have a laptop camera because I'm a paranoid. I like being able to just unplug my camera and be done. But you could do that. The more you plug in, the more you're able to do it. And then with OBS, you can like output stuff to different places. Okay. So that's what I was asking, an option. Yeah. Yeah. OBS though, like for a while, it takes, it, it gives you a headache. <laughs> It's, it takes you a while to get the screens right and everything else. And you'll spend some time on forums. But the thing is that once you get it set up, it's really nice. It's, it's a really good system. Um, it's just, it's free. And anything that's free is going to require work to make it do what you need it to do well. Or it'll have limitations you don't anticipate. So, and you can see it also has Twitch integration here. So, yeah, like right now. Um, I, I don't know, Mjiko, Mim, M, Mjik Miko, um, just posted something that appears here. I can also see the stream information of what I said. And, oh, cool. Wow, you guys are neat. I like you. Um, all right, so speaking of, we got Encounter plus Cool App for iOS, um, which with iOS 13.4, they're going to create a Mac OS app. Uh, when using it with Zoom, Zoom is a built-in AirPlay, which makes it easy to share app to players. So you're talking about that as using it in the room with players, because I can't, you can't airplay over a distance. Only thing right now is DM has to move tokens on the map. Zoom also has built-in virtual backgrounds. Yes, Zoom does, uh, and I believe that's for free right now. Um, I use, I'm using the chroma key because I make a lot of videos that I have to explain things to people, and I can't do that with Zoom. But yeah, Zoom has a free built-in background, virtual background thingy. Um, you can airplay in Zoom platform. So you're saying that if I'm in London and you're in, you know, New York, you can airplay via Zoom. I'm not as I'm not as good with Mac stuff. Um, a lot of the people that I work with don't have Macs. So oh, that's really awesome. I didn't know that. 
That's cool. Uh, there's a lot of like syncing that you can do for people. So I don't know what that sound was. So, oh, I'm going to close out OBS. You don't, y'all don't need that. So, um, but yeah, so you can play, um, so you can, you can airplay across that. I only, the only thing I know about airplay is that my students used to send it to use it to send inappropriate pictures to each other, uh, in class. That's what I know about it or to organize when they're going to go vape in the bathroom together. So, um, but beyond that, um, what are some other, does anyone else have any tips that they want to throw out there? Cause that was a neat one. I don't, I don't really know that much about iOS. If I have a, uh, a, I have an app, a tablet, iPad, um, if you had an iPad, uh, update, you can use zoom on an Apple platform. Nice. Yeah, I have a few of them. One of them is old and doesn't update anymore, but my current iPad does. And I only use it for drawing and keeping my kids quiet. So, but yeah, I mean, I, I taught middle school, so mostly my kids just drew dicks and airdrop them to each other. <laughs> that's that's the thing about middle school is pretty much everything comes down to kids drawing dicks. So, uh, on Windows, yeah, yeah. Um, you can also, one of the things that I've done for my players is I create a, I, I create a Google drive folder for the campaign and then I put stuff in there. Um, and then I also put PDF backups of their character sheets just in case like the site goes down because they do that sometimes. Um, Don John's super helpful. I don't know what Don John is. That sounds cool. Uh, have you ever checked out Don John's site for different tools? No, I have not. Um, actually earlier in the moderator chat, for the Discord, uh, for the GaryCon Discord, we were talking about the the rise and fall of Orc Pub and how sad it was. So, do I have? I don't know. Like, I see people with like three stars coming up, and I really feel like I wouldn't turn on um, like language filters. So, I wonder if that's just an automatic thing from Twitch, because I don't care about profanity. So, um, yep. We got what is that? Why, why people are getting hit with the three stars? So, oh, URLs. Oh, um, if, yeah, it's URLs. Uh, okay. All right. So, again, I'm dumb. I don't know how to fix that. But what I can do is I can check my stream settings and see if I have that uh, disabled. Because I don't care about people promoting themselves in their security, privacy, connections, recommendations, channels, and video. Um so Don John is legit. It has uh, tables, all the 5e spells as well as yeah, uh, my, it, Mark, we were talking about that as a um, um, we were talking about how Orc pub was great until it wasn't. And the reason we mentioned that is because like they got hit with a with a cease and desist for um, for in, in um, for allowing people to use or for using materials that people shouldn't be allowed to use. And um, or, that's when Orc Pub went from being great to being like not. <laughs> so Don John is probably doing great for now until they, until suddenly they're not, you know, it's, it's okay. All right. So um, yeah, I, I'm not going to lie folks. I, oh, here we'll go. Moderation. Uh, block hyperlinks. No, I just turned off block hyperlinks. You guys can put anything you want in there now. Um, okay, cool. So you guys should be able to put uh, hyperlinks in there now. But yeah. It's a legal tool, 100%. Awesome. I mean, yeah. Um, I just I just know that like some websites went from being like, yeah, they have all the player's handbook in there and you can choose like your stuff automatically as long as it's that. And I thought they were doing cool and then they weren't and then they got shut down. So that's it's one of the tough things with these with, with using this kind of material. So uh, other than Don John, is there any other, other neat materials out there? Because I'm always looking for stuff too. I am going to mute. All right, I have muted somebody. There we go. Ha. So, 
uh, HLow is using Pathfinder. What's HLow? By the way, somebody if somebody wants to post a, a URL to something, you're fine. <laughs> I do it all the time. Um, uh, Heroes Lab Online. Neat. Yeah. Um, if you have links, uh, by all means, try and throw them in there for other people. Uh, trying to think. Yeah. So, uh, but with all of these things, I mean, a big part of what it comes down to is what's easy. And I guess to to make my pitch once again, not all of your players, even young ones, not all of them are going to really understand technology, because simply put, um, you know, a lot of this, a lot of the younger students I have have grown up only with a tablet and don't understand a computer or the concept of installing something that doesn't have an app store. Um, a lot of the older folks I've I've worked with, when it comes to like anything that has account creation or if they have to install something, they get totally lost on anything that involves configuration settings. So anything you can do to make it easier for your players by by taking steps out of the process, you're going to find that you're going to make it, it's going to be a more welcoming environment for your players. And communicating with each other is a great way to, um, communicating with each other is a great way to, to uh, make sure that your players stay engaged and are there. Ooh, oh, <laughs> sorry. I almost took a call for work on my Twitch stream. That would have been bad. Um, homebrewing, uh, homebrewery. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, the dungeon painter studio. Oh, 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 there's one, um, uh, called fog of war, I think where, um, is it fog of war? There's something like that where it's like super cheap or free now that we're in, in, um, now that we're in COVID lockdown. So yeah. Uh, let's see. Map makers. Um, if you're homebrewing, I don't know. So, yeah. So, that's, um, I'm trying to think what else anyone has. Sorry, guys. I, I was totally not sure how long or how, how this whole thing would work. Uh, if any of you guys drop out, obviously, you know, let's vote with your feet, do your thing. But I'm always happy to hang out and hear other things that people have. Happy to, happy to see you guys share stuff. So, which by the way, um, I'm going to throw the, the link to the Gary Khan discord in there, because if you haven't joined that yet, you really should, because it is an absolutely awesome place for people sharing things and, and just, being excellent to each other. And um, I'm totally biased because I'm the person who started the Discord. So, yeah, which by the way, this whole virtual GaryCon thing is absolutely wild because we were at a point where we had like maybe 20 active users and almost 100 regular people. And then, um, the whole like fear of the con closing down shot our numbers up and now like things have gotten absolutely wild. Uh, so the discord has grown quite a bit. And the great thing is that all the Gary con community has come together to help support each other and create games and just be really excellent with each other. So uh, can I recommend a very basic video to start out with uh, online RPG gaming? I mean, completely basic, like your technology challenge. Well, um, yes, I created a short video that doesn't go into too much detail. Oh, oh yeah, uh, starting the Discord server. It was a really dumb idea um, that I had. Ah, good old Dwarf. Yes, he's been, Dwarf, you've been a huge help getting everything going. Um, I like Discord when I used it for playing with my players. And I, honestly, I started the Discord server just because I wanted to have more people to hang out with and play games with. And that's why I started it. And then it grew and grew and grew. And I, now I'm like completely lost. <laughs> like it is way beyond my skill set. So thankfully there's a lot of really talented people who are making it work um, because I am not a really talented person. I am a really uh, a mediocre person who occasionally gets lucky at doing things right. So, um, all right. So the YouTube video, which I'm going to hopefully find quickly. 
uh, I made is okay. Oh, by the way, any website that auto plays video is evil and needs to be banned. I'm just saying. That's just just a. Uh... All right, here we go. Share. Nope. Share. Nope. 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 Don't do it. Don't do it, computer. All right. So, I'm glad you picked up awesome tips. I'm really. I'm. I'm glad that I can always make it better for somebody. Um. Yeah, I don't know what we would have done if we didn't have that. Uh, nearly a Luddite here, um, but I have sometimes having a, a body is a good thing. Yes, uh, jumped in halfway through this. Uh, yes, I recorded it, and I'll actually be putting it up on my YouTube channel uh, so you guys can go back and check it out because I don't think I violated copyright at all, so I probably won't get a strike for it. I wasn't playing any music. Um, nothing, nothing crazy unusual happened, and I didn't teach you guys how to do any hacking. So I think we're good there. So yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll also be posting, I'll probably be posting a, a link to the video in the Gary Khan uh, Facebook group. So I've, I've just personally been trying to stay away from Facebook because people are scary. Uh, discuss mapping software. I did. Dr uh, Dwarf, do you have any mapping softwares that you like? Um, Sirenscape is free music fantasy soundboard. Yes. Uh, Sirenscape is cool. Um, oh, there's a few other ones that are out there that I can't think of that I've that I've dealt with that are pretty neat. Um, Sirenscape though is really good integration. The only issue I have with Discord is you can only have a single line in. So unless you have a mixing board, you have to hold up your tablet to your microphone, which is kind of embarrassing and awkward to do. I haven't found a good way to integrate Sirenscape into my Discord channels, um, but I'm, I'm guessing if you use um, I'm guessing if you use other services for like for working with your group, you might be able to do that. So, yeah, Facebook is scary. Yeah, for sure, dude. It's been it's been. Oof. Uh, there's a way around that sort of complex. Yeah, I mean that's just, that's the thing is I try to stick with simplicity. Uh, tablet to pad audio is good for ambience. Neat, awesome. Always happy to hear that. Yeah, mixing software. That's the problem. Um, I don't want to like I can do it. I actually have a mixing board. But like in, in simple tips on how to make things happen, that's not a, that goes past a simple level. So <coughs> uh, trying to figure out one commercial uh, for making and selling modules. Um, virtual soundboards like voice meter can work. Uh, that makes things a little more complicated. Yeah. Um, one of the favorite jokes that my players have, or that I, I have with my players is an in joke is that I will almost always link the, um, the Final Fantasy victory fanfare after they beat like a really big boss. And they just, they just I can hear them all playing it on their own in, in Discord in the background, and it always makes me laugh. Um, Auto Realm does not appear that good for Roll20 maps. No, actually, let me bring up, I did bring up and mention Dungeon Draft, which is a, a one-time fee of $20, and it's kind of in a beta stage right now. And by that, I mean, it's still limited in a lot of what it does, but I figure since we're talking map making and we still have te like, technically like seven minutes and you guys can vote with your feet if you don't want to hang out for this, um, I figure I'll show off Dungeon Draft. So, all right, toggle out of full screen, minimize. All right, let's switch back to screen two. Screen two, we are a go. So with Dungeon Draft, if I create a new map, um, I can actually choose the preset. I don't know why it says 50 inch, 40 inch or 55 inch TV, but you can choose the total width of what you want. You can start with a, a map wizard. I always love wizards. You can never go wrong with a wizard. So I tell it I want to generate something and then I hit generate and it'll give me an inside tavern. It's great. If I don't want to do the wizard, I can also do a variety of other things. Um, so say... But once I want to, once once I'm finished with my map, say I want to put a cave in here, I can go and design. Um, I can do like I can add a room. So if I want to add, uh, let's add a cupola. Who doesn't like a good cupola? There we go. We've added a cupola. It's it's very simple there. Um, you can also do. So 
say we've got a like a cracked wizard tower that's falling over. Well, there we go. That's that's one way of doing it. Um, you can also change and edit the points in the map. So say, for example, here. Say I wanted to extend this room up into here, and I wanted to make these two rooms meet. I don't know why I didn't fix the floor, but I can go ahead and I can throw a door right here. Oh, right, right, right there, right there. Yeah, so... Again, like I said, it's kind of in beta. That's how it feels. Um, so, yeah, you can throw doors in there. Uh, you can also draw. So say I wanted to draw a cave over here. I can just draw with my brush, and I can make a cave. Um, one of my favorite caves to make when I'm demonstrating how this works. I'm sure you get where that one was going. Um... You can also throw things in there. So I want to I want to throw objects in there. I can scatter tools. I can pick objects um, individually. So I want to throw a boat. I want to put boat stuff in there. I want to. So let's say this is a. I don't know. Like this is a pirate's fort, and this is the the boat that heads out to sea. I can throw that in there. I can also. Oops, ah, sorry. I, I can adjust. I, I say I want to put a some water over here. All right. Hold on. Freehand brush. So I want to put some water over here. Oh, come on. Here we go. And I, I want to... So I brush some water in here. Because this is the path out to sea. I can do that with Dungeon Draft. It's neat. It has a lot of things. It ha There's a lot of things it doesn't have. Like some of the objects just don't exist. That I wish did. There's I don't see an import range. But when I'm done with my map and I want to export it, I can choose quality. Um, I can even choose roll 20. So if I want to get it in there, I, I guess this is good for roll 20. I end up doing uh, 40 inch TB because otherwise the file is too high resolution to load into Google Slides um, and do things like that. So you can do you can do a lot of different stuff. It's like I said, it's a $20 thing. Uh, save often because my maps have a tendency to crash. Uh, I make them overly complex. So you don't want that to happen. Oh yeah. All right, everybody. Um, I'm going to wrap up. Thank you guys. I wouldn't be here if you guys didn't show up. Uh, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for participating. Those of you who are in Twitch chat, those of you who uh, showed up and talked in the, in the uh, go to meeting. Uh, I'm also grateful for that. That was really fun. Uh, in general, you can find me on the Gary Khan Facebook page, uh, the discord server. I'm around. I'm, I, I tend to answer everybody eventually. I just, don't answer quickly. So if you have any questions or need help with anything, reach out to me. I will take the time to make sure I can help you out as best I can. So have a good one. And thank you again. Bye. Also in my